Hey, good afternoon. Trader Tim here from eMini Mind doing a market analysis uh, video for uh, August 26. We're going to walk through some uh, trade setups and talk about the broader picture here, taking us into the last week of August. So, August is definitely a challenging month to trade. Uh, it's always been that way um, as long as I can remember, and uh, I definitely try and tread lightly and not get too aggressive. Once we get through Labor Day and specifically the Fed meeting, um, after Labor Day, which would be about two weeks after Labor Day, I believe, um, then we should really start picking up into our fall activity and, you know, volume will pick up. Uh, we've seen the last couple of weeks here, um, as we started August, volume really dropped off. It was coincidentally in conjunction with this bounce, but, um, there's talk about possibly lowering interest rates, which will then, uh, likely fuel um, the housing market, the stock market, and things uh, continue to, to go up. So as we approach these all-time highs yet again, um, you want to be careful about taking shorts as we get into all-time highs. Um, at this point, uh, we have a couple of unfilled gaps above us. So just the, basically the last two days where we touched all-time highs, those closes are unfilled. I always use the settlement close, so that's 4.15 Eastern Time. Uh, so anytime you're using or you're trading like a 15 minute um, or any kind of opening range breakout trade, um, I use the, the settlement close. So not the 4 o'clock close, but the 4.15 close. Uh, if you're trading futures, that's, that's kind of the official close. So um, being so close to all-time highs, we'll likely get back there. Um, I'm okay uh, shorting at this point, you know, intraday, uh, taking longs and shorts. But if we creep up into this 52 or 57, 21, 25, and hit that all-time high, uh, and, and start going above that, then I want to be real careful about taking shorts because when there's no resistance to the left um, on the chart, it's you might get some pullbacks, but they're likely going to be bought up. Uh, with a lot of chasing and a lot of FOMO, um, you know, anytime you get these big dips where it's like a V reversal, sometimes you'll see it intraday if you have a sharp drop, um, but more so on a daily chart where you have a couple of big gap down days, volatility spikes um, in the VIX, which now it's come way, way back down into the mid-teens again. But you get a lot of people that just throw in the towel, dump their portfolio, um, you know, jump on the bandwagon of the economy's going down and the stock market's going to zero. And then they get stuck when the market runs back up, they have to buy back in. So if you're a day trader, you're really not concerned with the fundamentals and even for by and large, the news itself isn't that important what I'm more what I pay more attention to is the time that the news is coming out so I'm not putting on a trade you know a minute or two before some kind of uh, news announcement that then would potentially shake me out of a trade uh, even if it ends up going my way there's just a lot of volatility that can um, pop up especially when you get um, you know, certain news reports uh, that come out usually at the top of the hour. So like 30 minutes in to the um, to the day. So 10 o'clock Eastern time is when you're going to see most news reports that uh, are impactful for for day trading if you're trading the, the open. But um, anywho, uh, so gaps and then our fib retracements we can see on a weekly chart. We've come down to an extension long, so not even a full 50% retracement if we're just looking at a basic pullback. Um, we didn't even make it that far down. We didn't even make it to these uh, prior highs from, uh, kind of, would that be 2022? Um, end of 2021. So we're still super bullish here. And and if the Fed starts cutting interest rates, it's, it's only going to get more bullish and, and things are going to um, keep going up. Because if when when interest rates go up, there's more incentive for you to park your money in a savings account earning 5%. So you take your money out of the stock market, you put it in a savings account, a high yield account or bonds um, would be the other one. And it's very low risk 
with a moderate reward. Well, if interest rates start going down and now my high yield savings account earning 5% or my CD earning 5% or even 6%, um, if that starts going down to 2, 3, 4% and I can get a dividend payout at 3%, well, and plus the growth, you know, 8, 10% on average per year, now I'm going to put that money back into the stock market. And when you get more people putting money in the stock market, it makes them stock prices go up uh, and the same thing can happen with housing prices um, summer seemed to be pretty slow for you know kind of the, the markets that I pay attention to I'm in Scottsdale and then um, also up in uh, the Black Hills of South Dakota are kind of the two areas that uh, I spend most of my time and have houses in so just kind of more in tune with those areas um, but I'm sure it's kind of a, the same way across the board in the US pretty slow or slower this summer um, houses sitting for longer but as interest rates start to go down it becomes more enticing to get a mortgage people who have been waiting on the sidelines um, and then those buyers start coming in houses start going quicker uh, you don't have to take a price cut you can be a little more competitive with your pricing and things just start going back up so um, I would not expect uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see more all-time highs and you know stock market running up especially into the election um, a lot can happen once we uh, complete the November election, but the run-up into an election tends to be pretty bullish. Uh, so we'll see if that's the case again this year. We only have a couple months, but you know a lot can happen in uh, just a couple months. So switching to intraday real quick, I just want to talk about one. Well, I guess a couple setups here. Um, <clears throat> going to so the 15-minute opening range breakout. Uh, this this candle here um, at 1300. That would be the settlement candle. So 4.15, it's closed. So you can see the first bar of the 15-minute chart did not trade at that price. Therefore, the 15-minute opening range breakout is a go. And uh, that ended up being a short because we broke to the downside. And that got a pretty quick um, 20 points on the ES. And so that was uh, a nice way to, to start the week. And then pull up my trade log here. Another one actually it was about the high of the day was this little double top, uh, a clean double top, meaning the high price was exactly the same. Uh, on the edge of being a hammer, I always say, like, for an inverted hammer, excuse me, for for an inverted hammer or a hammer to be a, a true inverted hammer or hammer, the, the body, like over here, this green hammer here, the body needs to be less than a third of the entire candle. So if it's a... Um, six point candle from high to low the the body should really be two points or less uh, in this one the body is about half of the high to low but being a double top and being early in the day and having the unfilled gap below us and having this what I call um, trend line here playing catch up the 21 EMA you know if you have trading hours only turned on so you don't see the overnight price action when the market opens at 9:30 eastern whatever wherever the if there's a gap in this case going up this 21 EMA kind of plays catch up to price and so we have room for the market to go not only down to prior lows which is also about where this 21 EMA um, ends up being, but also to the gap fill. So taking a short there, uh, I felt like was was worth it. It was kind of early in the day, and um, that one got a, a pretty quick run for uh, about four points. Um, so you know the ranges aren't as big as we'd seen a couple weeks ago, but still a nice little trade to start off the week. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to point out is when you get these situations where you have a nicey tick, where we have the nicey tick making a low. So like 6.43 and 6.43, low nicey tick at low price. So at the time it would have looked like this. So low nicey tick, uh, low price, and then we continue to break. So we break lows of uh, of the ES here, and then we come down. We make a. This was the more meaningful uh, nicey tick a little bit further into the day. 6.54. Um, that one was here, low price at low nicey tick. So we're 25 minutes into the day. We have a low price at low nicey tick. That could be the low of the day, but we um, 
pretty much immediately um, break it. About five minutes later, we make a new low on the ES, and we don't have a new low tick. So now we have a divergence, and that's a very good indication that we're going to get more trending to the downside. And you don't want to try and pick up along down at lows because like over here 715 was this guy it was a low it was a hammer but we have the tick divergence in play we're underneath the 21 EMA here and so the, there's a very good chance we keep rolling over and continuing to make new lows and that's what we did this got a little bit of a bounce for a couple of ticks but then we rolled over and made new lows um, came back up to the 21 EMA which this is an area I would look for an inverted hammer kind of like we had right here this inverted hammer was was pretty nice it was preceding it was a little bit of sideways action but nonetheless um, the inverted hammer at the 21 EMA you know going short would be the kind of the trades I'd be looking for today. So something up here at the 21 off of a little bounce from lows. <clears throat> and so you can see we just kind of like went down, down, down. And then as we get towards the 90 minute mark, we just start to go sideways. There wasn't a whole lot um, happening in there. And then <clears throat> go to a larger time frame here. Um, and then we just kind of pretty much went generally sideways. We've got another eh, couple hours here before the bell. Um, so we're kind of in the, the lunch hour of just kind of consolidating and moving sideways. But by and large, this morning downtrend um, kind of predicated on that tick divergence. So I find the NICE tick is super helpful when I'm day trading, uh, especially if you're day trading the ES or if you're trading the NQ, um, just slap a slash Q to the end of it, and then you get the NASDAQ tick. Um, and then same with the uh, breadth and the advanced decline line. So if you have questions, uh, feel free to drop them below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.